Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How and this is episode 37 from the Ask Finola How series and we have a follow-up question from what we were talking about in the last couple of weeks which was all around you know conversion and events and how to make the most of these opportunities and this one is quite interesting this week because it's let me read it for you <laughs> that would be good okay so I've been invited to be part of the lineup for a great national event in the next few weeks. Is there anything I should do to make the most out of this opportunity? So first of all, fantastic when that happens. And it does happen. It happens from time to time um, when you start to make a name for yourself, when people start to really recognize what you're doing and an event can come up and you can get invited directly to that event to speak at, to do a demonstration at. Um, and really show off what you can do because it has inherent value. Okay, so then it's how do we make the most of that opportunity? That's the question. Okay, so a few things for you as always um, on Ask Finola House. So first of all, I get you to, because you can get wrapped up in this stuff really, really quickly. So the first thing I would do is consider the context. Okay. So this is a gig or an event that you don't have full control over. Now, my experience of event organizers is anything that can make their life easier, they will run with. They want you to be happy. They want to deliver a really good event. So when they're people who are given demonstrations or people who are speaking or whatever it is at these big events, they want that to go really well for them. They don't know your business. So if you can help them understand where you want to be positioned in the language and give them all the things that they need like they'll want your headshot they'll want your promo piece and being really really clear so it's short pieces of your story to really draw people to you so give them everything they need and make sure you understand even though it's their gig you can advocate for where you're best placed so they may have a theme this, for this event that's not quite in alignment with what you're doing. So find a way that the compromise will work for you as well. Don't automatically go, no, I can't. Or don't automatically go, no, I can't do this. And don't automatically go, yes, I can do this. Say, how about I do this? You know, collaborate, work with them. You know, you can find a way to spin it. Which leads me to my next point. Make sure it's event, an event that's actually going to draw your customers to you. Because if it doesn't draw your customers to you, then there's actually no point in you doing the event in the first place. So that's probably your first decision. Should I say yes? Should I say no? And the key decision here is, are my customers going to be there? What's it going to do to help grow my business? Not just be excited that you got asked, but be excited that you got asked to be in front of your customers. That's the most important thing here. And then work with the event organizers, be extremely helpful, give them everything they need. And when you give them everything they need, often there'll be leeway for how you can to adjust a little message somehow to position you better, to be on the stage that you want to be on, to be in the part of the event that you want to be at, because that's where you get to move things around to suit what you want out of it. Because sometimes, a lot of times, those events you're not necessarily getting money for, you're getting exposure. That's the trade-off. That's the exchange, the value exchange that happens. So, you know, if you are getting paid for it, then that's fantastic. But in often, you are not getting paid for that. So you need to maneuver so you do get uh, control over your message, you know, the best possible positioning for your message, okay? So, yeah, okay, that's the first piece. Okay, so the next thing that I would say to you is when it's a live event, when there's a demo or something like that involved, you're always thinking of, if you remember last week, we said start with conversion in mind. So here you're thinking of what feels natural to me. I'm always doing that. What feels natural for me to do here? So if I'm doing an event where it's a cookery demonstration or a do something to do with dog demonstration or it's something very physical, you to remember the context of where you are and what feels natural because we don't want this disconnect from what we do and who we are and our marketing. We don't want that disconnect. We want there to be a natural flow to things that there isn't this. The marketing will always work better when there's a natural flow, when it makes sense 
for you to have a call to action in place? Would it make sense for you to ask for something to do? So in a live event where there's lots of people around, it'll be noisy. So your message, your message shouldn't be complicated anyway, but your message should be very easy to say and remember, easy to understand, easy to hear because of the noise. So that if you keep repeating one singular message, like make it one message that they can grasp that's in alignment with what you're doing at the event. So that they keep, when they love what you do, that they keep going, you know, remember that person who did that? It's that, uh, you know that, and what you want them to say is your website address or your name, a way that they can find you so that they remember. Very often at these live events, people get involved in them and they get caught up in doing the best job possible because they want to give great value because they know that if they give great value, then they will be memorable. But you want them to remember who you are as well as what you did. So make sure that in your language, that there are moments, that there are pauses in your language and in your delivery that calls them to your website, calls them to your stand. I prefer if you call them to your website because then you have much more control over what happens. At live events, you don't really have, people may not come to you because it's too busy, may not come to you because there's nobody there, because maybe you went and had a coffee break. So bring them to your website, okay? And then you then that's the place for conversion, making sure that it's all in alignment, okay? And then you can actually trip into what we were doing last week, okay? So if you have to kind of take this moment of going, what's the natural flow of what I'm saying at this event, this demonstration that will pull them to my website? And have I given them a reason to come to my website? What else am I giving them that makes them want to come and stay on my website? Am I entering them into a competition that's just so attractive? Am I giving them a free download of something? Am I allowing them to, am I inviting them to a webinar that will give the, bring them in deeper and pull them into the funnel that you might have created already, that you get them into this process? So you go from this kind of less controllable scenario to this much more controllable scenario where they can dive into your funnel. You can bring them through, do a webinar, guide them to the next product on your journey that we talked about last week. And also that you make sure that there's an email conversion path afterwards. The other thing that I would say to you about live in-person events is there's also this great opportunity for some kind of physical prompts so that you make sure that there's something that you can give them that they take away or they grab that they want to take away. Sometimes like, you know, it's, it's interesting what people find that they want at these events. Sometimes they just want a sweet, you know. <laughs> so if there is something that they have a takeaway that it's a, not a key ring, but you need to get inventive here. You start with the idea of flyer that tells your story and draws them to this event you want them to sign up for. Do get them to do something specific, not something generic not just come to my website. It's come to my website and get this insider's guide to how to parent more effectively. Come to my website to learn how to do macrame hanging baskets that will change the world. Whatever it is that you're bringing them to, it make it specific and make it very targeted for your customer because that will lodge in their mind. The passive, just come to my website, doesn't convert. It's not sexy enough, it's not interesting enough. Bring them on a specific path that's in alignment with why they went to this event in the first place, why they loved your particular demonstration and why they want more. Feed them that more so that you can convert them. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I want to say to you. Uh, yeah, well, the other thing I would say to you is top and tail all of this with a really good marketing process. We talk to you all the time about this in the Get Strategy program, which is making sure you have a really good marketing process. So topping and tailing it means, first of all, you know, inviting your own subscriber list to see you at this event. This is an opportunity for you to meet them in person, particularly in this time when we're not doing lots of meeting people in person still. Um, so top and tail it, invite your list, invite them by email, invite them by social media, because you're also declaring to the world that you got invited to this event. And that automatically gives you an inferred authority, credibility. So it boosts your, 
your cred with your own subscribers, your own customers. So invite them, email, social media, all of that good stuff. Do a campaign around it. It's not just up to the event organizers to make this powerful. You have to make it powerful for you. And then tail it at the end with great emails, uh, conversions with kind of really good events that you get people to sign up for and really maximize the opportunity by planning it end to end. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions around this theme of how to kind of bring people through this journey when you're doing an event or something like this, that you want to know how to do the conversion better, if you have questions around any part of this, DM me, DM us at Make It Bite Sized, and we'll talk about it next week. And if you're really interested, you can jump on board with me as well. This has been Ask Finola How, and this has been episode 37, which was I've been invited to be part of the lineup for a great national event in the next few weeks. Is there anything I should do to make most of this opportunity? The answer is so much you can do. And we talked about it here today. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.